The Science of Self-Discipline by Peter Hollins is a comprehensive guide that explores the underlying mechanisms of self-discipline, willpower, mental toughness, and self-control. Through his book, Hollins aims to provide a deeper understanding of how these components work together to help individuals resist temptations and achieve their goals. At its core, the book asserts that self-discipline isn't an innate trait or a gift, but rather a skill that can be developed and honed through practice. Hollins emphasizes that cultivating self-discipline involves more than just sheer willpower. It requires a strategic approach to managing one's thoughts, behaviors, and habits. Hollins begins by discussing willpower, describing it as a finite resource that can be depleted over the course of a day. This concept, known as ego depletion, suggests that making too many decisions or exerting self-control in one area can exhaust one's ability to maintain self-discipline in other areas. To combat this, the author recommends conserving willpower by automating decisions and avoiding unnecessary temptations. Next, the author delves into the concept of mental toughness, which is the psychological edge that enables people to cope with challenging situations and come out on top. Mental toughness involves resilience, a positive mindset, and the ability to persist in the face of difficulties. Hollins suggests that mental toughness can be built up through exposure to challenges and the development of coping strategies. Self-control is also a pivotal concept in the science of self-discipline. Hollins highlights that the ability to override impulses and delay gratification is crucial for adhering to long-term goals. One key strategy for enhancing self-control is to create a supportive environment that reduces exposure to triggers and temptations while reinforcing positive behaviors. Hollins moves on to explain the importance of understanding the sources of our impulses and urges. By recognizing the psychological triggers that lead to the desire for immediate gratification, individuals can create effective countermeasures to resist temptation. The author suggests that mindfulness practices can play an important role in this regard by promoting greater awareness of one's thoughts and feelings without reacting impulsively. To achieve self-discipline, Hollins advises setting clear, specific goals that are aligned with one's values and long-term objectives. Rather than focusing on abstract goals, it's important to establish concrete, measurable targets that are achievable and broken down into manageable steps. This not only provides a clear path forward, but also generates a sense of accomplishment as each step is completed, which reinforces the habit of self-discipline. Furthermore, Hollins discusses the role of habits in self-discipline. Habits are automatic behaviors that, once entrenched, require little willpower to maintain. By forming positive habits that align with one's goals, individuals can ensure that disciplined actions become part of their daily routine. Replacing bad habits with good ones is essential for sustainable self-discipline. Accountability is yet another tool for fostering self-discipline. Hollins stresses the importance of being accountable to oneself and to others. Making commitments and tracking progress can increase motivation and the likelihood of sticking to one's goals. In some cases, involving a partner or a support group can provide additional motivation and encouragement. The author also explores motivational factors and how they can influence self-discipline. Intrinsic motivation, which arises from within and is driven by personal satisfaction or interest in the activity itself, is more powerful and enduring than extrinsic motivation, which is driven by external rewards or pressures. Focusing on intrinsic motivators can help sustain self-discipline even when faced with obstacles. A significant point Hollins makes is the need for balance. While self-discipline is valuable, being overly rigid can lead to burnout and a decrease in overall well-being. It's important to allow for flexibility and to incorporate rewards and breaks to maintain motivation and to prevent exhaustion. In dealing with setbacks, the author offers strategies for maintaining self-discipline through adversity. Instead of being discouraged by failure, viewing it as an opportunity for learning and growth can foster resilience. Hollins encourages readers to assess what went wrong, adjust their approach, and persevere, rather than giving up on their goals. Hollins also highlights the role of mindset in self-discipline. Adopting a growth mindset, which is the belief that one's abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work, 
is crucial for overcoming challenges and achieving success. A fixed mindset, conversely, can lead to a defeatist attitude and undermine self-discipline. By embracing challenges and viewing effort as a path to mastery, individuals can strengthen their self-discipline. Emotional intelligence is identified as a component that supports self-discipline. Understanding and managing one's emotions can reduce impulsive reactions and aid in maintaining focus on long-term goals. Holland suggests that emotional intelligence can be improved through practices like reflection, journaling, and empathy training. Visualization and positive affirmations are presented as techniques that can prime the mind for success. By vividly imagining the attainment of goals and repeatedly affirming one's ability to succeed, individuals can increase their resilience and maintain their commitment to self-discipline. Hollins touches upon the importance of physical health in supporting self-disciplinary efforts. Regular exercise, adequate sleep, and proper nutrition can bolster mental and physical stamina, making it easier to resist temptations and persist with challenging tasks. In the realm of productivity and time management, the author emphasizes the significance of prioritizing tasks, eliminating distractions, and focusing on one thing at a time. By doing so, individuals can make the most efficient use of their willpower and maintain self-discipline throughout the day. The book also suggests that self-compassion is vital for maintaining self-discipline. Being too harsh on oneself can lead to negative emotions that undermine self-discipline. Practicing self-compassion involves treating oneself with the same kindness and understanding one would show to a friend, which can help maintain motivation and resilience in the face of setbacks. Toward the end of the book, Hollins underscores that self-discipline is not only about resisting negative temptations, but also about actively pursuing positive goals and making choices that lead to growth and fulfillment. Cultivating a sense of purpose and connecting daily actions to larger aspirations can make the practice of self-discipline more meaningful and rewarding. In summary, the science of self-discipline provides valuable insights and practical strategies for developing the self-discipline necessary to resist temptation and achieve personal goals. Peter Hollins affirms that self-discipline is a skill that can be strengthened through the right mindset, habits, and techniques. Through a combination of understanding psychological principles setting clear goals, building resilience, forming positive habits, embracing accountability, maintaining balance, and practicing self-compassion, individuals can enhance their self-discipline and work towards a more focused, purposeful, and successful life. You can listen to the full audiobook for free by following the URL in the description.